Hello everybody, welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about The Crow, the 2024 remake, readaption, whatever they're calling it. Oh boy, alright, there might be a lot of comparisons to the 1994 Crow, but I'll try to at least explain why it's important to me. So, we have a movie called The Crow, directed by Rupert Sanders, fucking shitload of producers, starring Bill Skarsgård, I don't know who Skid Twigs is, whatever. And, oh, it is such a disappointment that it made me want to rewatch, and I did, the original Crow, 1994, with Brandon Lee. Now, this movie, the remake, or the 2024 version, just lacks the heart and charm of the original. By no means is the original a uh, very good, a good movie, very good in the aspects that would make, uh, you know, critics praise it you know, get oscar and no, oh, fuck oscars but you know the critical praise and it has gained a fan base and a charm uh you know a cult classic type feel i would almost say it was brandon lee's most iconic role and his breaking into a the rock persona type thing where everybody just loves The Rock and he could be charming in his movies and even if they're not great. And I'm multiple times, maybe too many times, have uh, touted that if I enjoy a movie and have fun with it, I have no qualms about saying how much I love it or like it. However, I won't defend it and, you know, go point by point and try to, you know, disassemble people's real critiques of the of a movie but it doesn't mean i'm not gonna like something or why fans would like a movie this doesn't have the qualities that you need to do a comic book adaption it just lacks so much first off the music is horrible at times and in the first movie it was horrible at times Although it had a great Stone Temple Pilots song at the end credits. But the first movie involved that Eric Draven was a fucking musician. And it felt like it fit in the movie for what it was supposed to do. And supposed to be. This movie does nothing for me. If I'm going to give any praise, it's Bill Skarsgård his performance however i would say that i would bet that after the movie wrapped before critics and before box office he would have been pissed off the movie they're trying to look at some of the you know behind the scenes talk in the wiki about how he might not have liked the ending and i don't think it had anything to do with it first off the first movie brandon lee's 1994 starts off and you're really confused what the fuck is going on and it really centers around the narration and the movie centers around in a sense like a little a young girl who has a drug addicted mom who's i don't know prostituting herself mixed up with this gang of you know rapists and maniacs well out of nowhere Brandon Lee bursts out of a grave and he becomes, you know, to a vengeance. This movie takes like an hour before you get any feels at all. In the, in the first movie, there's a show don't tell aspect where you see from a young age, uh, Eric, Brandon Lee, is in love with his girl and they be you know gonna get married whatever the story culminates in when in flashbacks you find out that she was raped and killed and he was thrown out a window and killed it feels like 
the heart of the first movie was in having fun doing a comic book adaption and Brandon Lee was just right for the part. Again, in no way is it a great movie, but there's a reason why it's loved by so many. This movie will be forgotten. It will be discarded as just another fucking cash grab. Sorry. Uh, you know, again, Bill Scar's got, I don't think that's what his point was, but there's no heart in this movie. And you got a movie about a fucking soulmate, true love, and coming back for vengeance, and it just misses everything. I don't even like the combat, the deaths, the, you know, the whole concept. And can we not use um, this fucking actor for every role like this with this? I think he's... Um, what was this, Danny Houston? He's too... You can't keep doing this with this guy in every fucking movie. As soon as I saw his face, I knew what the fuck everything was going to play out with him, the way he plays the part. I was just like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. You should have kept him away from this movie. Not that he's a bad actor, but it's just... Ugh, it just felt... It just didn't feel right. So the 2024 Crow starts with... A young Eric Draven having a tragedy with the horse, and you find him an addict in a real rehabilitation center, and then the other plot with the woman, Sophie, Shelley, whatever the fuck, is involved in some bad shit, and she's on the run. Um, she runs into cops before they can get to her. And she's put into rehab. Now, the uh, underlying uh, menace of this movie is supposed to be a real supernatural threat. Spoilers, plot, whatever the fuck. I don't care in this fucking movie. But there's a guy who made a deal with the fucking devil, Dan Houston. So he's living centuries, whatever the fuck. And he damns innocent souls to hell and that's his payment in the original 1994 it's a bunch of fucking lunatics and the leader of these lunatics has a girlfriend slash sister i don't know what the fuck and she alludes to the supernatural and the power of the crow and that's like kind of as far as it goes in that aspect although Eric Draven is obviously, Brandon Lee is supernatural, obviously comes from the grave, he can fucking heal wounds, so on and so forth. But this 2024 adaption, whatever the fuck, just started grating on my nerves. You want to make a 45 minute hour love at first sight type thing. And it just doesn't fucking work. I don't know if it's chemistry between them, the pacing of it, how I'm fucking dying for something interesting to happen. And it doesn't have charm and love. Now, a lot of these remakes don't need to do that. Like, as bad as the fucking Robocop remake was, it wasn't trying to do the, I'll buy that for a dollar type to me com you know comedy and there are adaptions of books that stray from things that become more interesting or more mass appeal for an audience like starship troopers or you know jurassic park now where this movie really starts to go wrong is when you get to the point where eric and sophie are killed and eric goes to this fucking purgatory like afterlife and he's put on this quest for revenge there's never a moment i am invested and to make a comparison again to the 1984 version eric is clearly attached to these crows he sees through their eyes and the heart of the movie is a little girl as bad as the acting is in that movie there is some terrible acting is 1994 version but guess what the crow brandon lee 
hugs the little girl twice in that fucking movie. He makes friends with the cop, Eddie Hudson, whatever the fuck his name is, the guy from Ghostbusters. And there's a fucking relationship. There's talking. There's, um, you know, at times bad, but at least it, it is what audiences remember as what they love about the movie. His way of going up against the villains in the 1994 version. And there's bad act. There's bad everything going on in that movie. But it it did and has a huge following. It means something in the Crow movie when they figure out that the Crow is attached to him and they go to kill the Crow, injure it, and find out he can be wounded. This is the Brandon Lee version. In this version, it is fucking bland. There's no heart. There's no true moments that make me feel attached. If I'm going to give any more credit to the fucking adapt the 2024 version it's only i kind of like the ending where it's the night they were murdered spoilers and she's resuscitated and he's not but that he's in purgatory like you know okay even if that wasn't a definitive you know ending to it it could be portrayed that he can never be in love with her but he'll still come back in other movies whatever and you know, maybe even the third movie they reunite. But again, the 1994 version is somewhat campy and fucking goofy. However, he looks amazing in the movie. And when he takes his jacket off and he has this fucking like leather tight suit, it looks awesome. In this movie, it's bullshit from beginning to end with nonsense get ups and fucking music that's fucking so annoying especially this opera scene which i fucking hated it's like supposed to be the pivotal moment in this movie and i just fucking can't wait for it to end you know yeah fun get to see people get shot get stabbed even the you know protagonist or whatever the hero of the fucking movie and it just fucking became monotonous and annoying now, again, this is not saying that there's going to be fucking people who like this movie and have fun and enjoy it for what it is. But I'm here to just speak on how I'm affected by it. I am a huge fan of the original Crow, not because it's a fucking deer hunter. It's, you know, Apocalypse Now and it's Oscar worthy. No, because it was fun and had heart and connected with me on levels. And I played guitar when I was younger and seeing the you know aspects of that he brings the fucking guitar he carries it with him part of the movie <laughs> and there's a scene where he's doing a riff like on the roof it is fucking stupid but fun it has an atmosphere to it that permeates through everything there's a moment in the fucking 1994 version where the cop bernie hudson ernie hudson tells Eric and they connect on a level where Eric finds out that this cop stayed with his dying girlfriend slash wife for three hours the whole time she struggled to live. It is fucking awesome. And it connects on a deep level that keeps the movie, you know, and interesting and, and close to your heart. Years after it's fucking released, what is it, 30 fucking years? And here we are with a fucking readaption, and all they went for is fucking violence and, you know, a shitty drug addiction fucking angle. And I'm supposed to believe that these people were soulmates for some fucking reason when in the first one you see fucking hardly anything like i said it starts off there's a fire you know they're killed and he raises from the grave and you start finding out what's going on and they were fucking so much overacting garbage in that movie but yet again it is fucking fun and it is it stands the test of time i watched it again and it still holds a place now Yes, it could be like magic at a certain time in your life. And I talk about this once in a while. 
I wanted to love this movie. I wanted to get into this fucking movie and really find a piece of it that connected me and brought back that feeling of watching the first one because like i said 45 minutes 50 minutes into this movie i am fucking annoyed not interested giving no fucks about anything you, you use this villain danny houston and i was just annoying like and in the fucking ending the anticlimactic ending just doesn't work for me and when you think of a movie and you know i don't look i'm not here to fucking spout fucking you know writers notes and you know what makes a good movie and maybe there are there are better people to do that more in depth but this movie lacks so much it is fucking a movie that was started to be developed in 2008 so i don't know exactly what that means but it just shows you how many fucking people got on this fucking remake readaption got off it got on it got off it and most of them have the feeling of we have brandon lee's legacy to you know live up to these people didn't give a fuck not one fuck to give the crows, the aspects of them are fucking ridiculous. It has nothing to do with a connection. It doesn't feel like there's any otherworldly grounding in that, which is the movie's called The Fucking Crow. And, and, and as many times as they try to tell you that The Crow will lead you to correct the wrongs, it never feels like it works. In the first one, you got fucking, he sees through their eyes, he, he appears right after it. He talks to a little fucking girl. He, like I said, he hugs her twice. Once is at a fucking graveyard. And she's pivotal at the end to be saved with the cop. This one is just nothing. And when he picks up the fucking sword, it just fucking made me roll my eyes. Like, are you really trying to do this now? Oh, we're going to give him the coat now, but see his bare chest and fucking tattoos. Like, I don't give a fuck. Are you trying to do a John Woo fucking bullshit thing when it was fucking bad? Because if it was, it was bad. You know, what am I going to give a couple of points, uh, you know, to fucking a, a cool kill? You know, the cool kills don't make a fucking movie for me. I mean, if they're added to a fucking corny, campy, heartfelt fucking movie, maybe. Look, I can go back and think of so many movies that would be improved with special effects that are amazing. I always thought, you know what? If anybody's going to do anything, James Cameron or the, whoever the fuck to go to the first Terminator movie and fix all the really bad looking, you know, plastic looking shit in the stop motion. But it doesn't mean that movie is not great and it still doesn't, it still holds up. And you know, T2 is just fucking amazing and almost perfect in that sense. This movie gives me nothing. Act one, act two, act three. There's no fucking progression that made me feel like I was on any kind of ride immersed in this movie. It, it just doesn't. His, his flashback connection to his horse to this bullshit love at first sight true soulmate bullshit to stupid fucking decisions made throughout the whole movie by characters and none of them seem real down to earth you know there's no heart in this fucking movie and i don't know how you can not do that again you want to go with strict comic book adaption or say let's know that this is what the novel is like well then that's like I said, where people change things to make it more for a movie audience. You failed. I, you know, I don't know what to say about looking at a Jurassic Park novel, whatever, and, you know, Starship Troopers, that type thing, where they decided to take an angle and the director looked at it and said, you know what? 
this doesn't look like there's any fucking love for the crow i don't know what to call it, franchise and it's a shame too because i like this actor in this role it could have been fucking amazing like he's he's good he he has a a present but there's nothing to work with here i'm gonna watch for 40 fucking minutes of this bullshit romance sorry it's, it's not and then it's just violence and fucking for violence sake it it doesn't work without some kind of heart some kind of grounding in you know things that make me feel like i'm you know i'm invested and i'm immersed this is just shit to throw on the screen it's a it's it's I don't like saying things like cash grab. I've been known, well, I've fucking been known. Like I, I fucking have my 50 fucking views and whatever, but dick, you know, uh, it's just fucking annoying. I want to like a fucking movie. It harkens back to my, my youth, you know, what am I, 94, I'm 23 fucking years old, captivated by a, you know, pretty bad, cheesy fucking movie that 30 years later, has a huge audience and a huge love. And I don't think no one's going back and, you know, citing all these fucking critically acclaimed moments in that movie. It does have shitty fucking music blaring moments. And like I said, even if you give it a hand wave because it's, he's a musician, it fits the overall theme what the movie's trying to do. He's campy, he's fucking on the thing for revenge. As a matter of fact, it's the first movie he shows up at this fucking gang leader, whoever the fuck, good actor too, uh, great voice and everything. He shows up at this huge meeting with like 20 gangsters and says, give me that guy and you can all leave. His purpose is to get the people who killed him and his wife. He's going to let the guy go. And, and it's a weird moment because even back then, I remember going, what? That you're just going to kill everybody? No, the first movie is his vengeance against the people who wronged him. It didn't bleed into, oh, I got to stop crime in the whole city. And it was done on purpose. And I think it's a great moment in that movie that shows how you can... Just keep something going that should have ended with common sense. The guy going, yeah, take this fucking idiot fucking lunatic. Again, there's so much bad overacting in that fucking movie. It's hard to fucking imagine. I just watched it again. But holy shit, will I watch that movie? And I'll never watch this movie again. The, 12, the 2024 Crow is a forgotten fucking mistake. It's just, I don't know how it happens. In development since 2008. What? Come on. You, you can't do something right? I would be surprised if this movie's got any fucking fanfare. Like, what is it? Can, I can't think, I can't think of things that doing, that's done right. I just fucking close my notebook like 45 minutes in like this is bullshit like i'm not taking notes i'm not fucking you know i take my mental notes and i have a good way of uh it was on my D, D days of keeping things in my memory and but no i like to take my notes and sometimes i'm like so drawn in that i forget to write a note that like you know when, oh shit i didn't put down you know but this part that amazed me because you're so engrossed in the movie I wanted to go fucking take a shower. I wanted to cook. I wanted to check the fucking, you know, out my window to see if the fucking, they were finished fixing the fucking pipes in my building. Like, the movie was nothing. So many people attached to this fucking movie over and over. And you can't fucking make a decent fucking movie. Go read the wiki. It's mind-numbing how big the section is for development and how it fucking became about it's fucking insane
again bill skarsgård is this the guy from um it he played it right uh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. he played pennywise he's great in that and i kind of like those movies i don't got nothing against him and i kind of liked where he could have went with this movie you want to do a fucking totally serious, violent, gritty fucking movie? Do it right. I mean, and I, I said this before about the John Wick movies. Like, the first John Wick movie is beloved to me, and it will be cherished, and I'll watch it so many times. John Wick 2 and 3 are fucking trailers. And I love Keanu Reeves, and, you know, the respect I give to all the the training and shit they did in those movies is fucking outstanding. I can see why people like those movies. The fourth one, just, you know, whatever. This fucking movie feels like a trailer for a movie. I don't need the bullshit, gritty fucking violence that has no charm and passion. Again, the 1994 version just loses charm and love it it feels like it wants to do something even if it doesn't do it very well at times and i think that could make a movie and maybe not in box office uh, appeal but you know there are so many stories of box office bombs that people over years love this is not going to be fucking one of them there's no fucking way i could be convinced that this movie will gain and garner a fucking audience that will keep, you know, you know, I can see fucking people wanting a uh, fucking sequel. Because maybe, you know, because people like me, maybe that like the actor can say, you know what, he can do a more charming, corny, you know, version. And almost felt like this movie was made to be fucking made and again cash grab or not do you look at this as someone trying to keep the ip because you hear about that it was a really fucked up hellraiser movie and i think the whole background of that hellraiser movie they're all there's only like two i really love but some of them other ones were interesting what things they did with it but there was one that was clearly garbage and then you know you look behind the scenes and oh company wanted to keep the ip for whatever reason and you know well we know what reason what do you mean this is hasn't been done since 1994 i don't see a huge revitalization in its comic book adaptions or you know current stories that are captivating people and again even if someone wants to say it's so much more like the book or so much more like the comic uh what they call them uh there's a word graphic novel if it's that or maybe shit came out that i don't know about i i can't see it i just can't see it it's almost a waste of a movie and i even have my problems with like the shitty zack snyder shit and sometimes i try to argue with myself and debate and go oh you know what at least Guys can be given a movie, they can have their vision, and they can make their rebel moons. That are just, ugh, you know. And then there's the other side of the argument, like, where did that money go to waste? You know, someone else could have got that movie with more passion or whatever, fine. I get it, but my argument would be, it's more offensive for things I love, and that's just a personal thing. Like, $180 million for the fucking accolade. What the fuck in that showrunner oh my god what a fucking asshole I, I i just look at this as a fucking huge misstep and you know what i'm gonna look right now you know, fucking notes or whatever but what was the box office on this fucking movie it grossed 9.3 million and 14.5 million in other territories uh so 23.7 million Uh, what did it cost? Well, it wasn't telling me that, right? You know what? This is where, oh, you got I should be fucking doing my... I get annoyed at these movies, and 
I just don't care after a while. That's just the truth. I don't know. Okay. A production budget of 50 million. You know, you should have gave the movie 100 million, then what would it do? Whoever's vision for this movie was nothing but a morbid violence tale and then use the trappings of the crow. I don't, I don't, I don't see it. If maybe this annoys me more than certain things because of the attachment I have to the 1994 version. But I've had this discussion with my friends and like, I can see why people will like Rings of Power. It's a fucking travesty. It's a fucking nightmare for Tolkien fans who love the Cimmerillion and get deep into the fucking law. And... But I can kind of see it. And me, I fucking love the Wheel of Time. I went, I did a fucking great... Oh, uh, well, great. <laughs> uh, I did a fucking love fest podcast for that. It's like my latest one. It's not fucking perfection it's you know i can see people fucking hating it for the things they do differently but the crow is one of those things that can be done with different stories and different adaptions and i can see it working you could do a more vicious violent you know strictly you know what it's not even strictly because you have a fucking guy made a deal with the devil you have a purgatory where the fucking guy just talks to you about shit. And then there's a part in this fucking movie where the guy tells him you failed. Okay, so in this movie, what they do, go to bed, I don't know. He falls in love with this girl, love you forever, blah, 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 blah. And then he finds out that the girl was... Uh, how would you say corrupted and forced to kill innocent women because i think the thing of the villain in this danny houston guy is he made a deal with the devil kill innocent girls but he has this power of the voice which means he's not just a fucking old human who just has eternal life he has some kind of supernatural ability he whispers in your ear eyes turn white or some shit and you're com hell to do whatever so the mother jumps off a fucking roof and shelly whatever the fucking name is is told or compelled to get so the crow builds god's god loses his true love because the guy the fucking railroad guy tells him you'll feel pain but you won't die you'll heal if your love remains true. So when he finds this out, he doubts her, dies, comes back, and then the movie goes fucking nowhere with this. The guy tells him, you, know, you failed, you had one shot, you fucked it up. And love is impure. And there's no real connection, there's no deep moment here. The crow just says, okay, my soul for hers. What? Oh yeah, you know, oh, this means you'll never be with her. Yeah, you know, whatever the fuck, right? I'll do it send me back and he just goes back and he's you know he, he heals and stuff and the guy tells him you now can go between the worlds like they do who the fuck is they what the crows no fucking meaning there's no connection there what like the villains what the fucking the villain in this movie, Houston guy, doesn't even know what the fuck the railroad purgatory is. What is this place? Blah, 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 blah. Before he's fucking destroyed and pulled down to hell and, uh, you know. One visual I think I marked down was the death of the, 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 the water scene where he's going for his girl. You know, okay, but I've seen that so many times. I just try to give credit to a fucking couple of things in this movie. But the 2024 remake of The Crow, to me, is garbage. It's not even fun for me. It's not something, you know, I want to talk to my friends with and get gauged their temperature on it because I know I love it. Because it happens to me a lot. 
I'm gonna say this for the millionth time. I love the Green Lantern movie. I watch it over a dozen times. Fuck me, I have bad taste, whatever. I watched the She-Hulk fucking show. I loved it, had fun, comic book nonsense for me. And I'm not gonna go on fucking debate shows or have arguments about what is wrong with the show. Yeah, it structurally sucks, it blah, 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 blah. I don't give a fuck, I liked it. I would be more than happy to do that with this movie, but I can't. It fucking annoyed me. It had no heart. It was just fucking bland, the movie. And it's fucking violence. There's deaths. There's whatever. There's shitty gun shit in it, too. Like, sword nonsense. No, the first movie didn't bother with a lot of that. And it really didn't care, I don't think couple of cool kills, a quip here and there. But then Eric's got to talk to the cop, and at the end, he says a, a stupid thing, but it fucking resonates with you. He says, what you gave me in here, because the Brandon Lee Crow puts his hands on the cop, Ernie Hudson's head, and takes the, not takes, he duplicates or he absorbs the memory of the cop sitting with his fucking wife hours until she died and he uses that memory to beat the villain because at the end he's hurt and he's almost mortal in the sense that he could be wounded. he's not healing rapidly where you know you can shoot him 50 times and you know he'll pop back up that type shit no so he uses that memory and he gives it to the villain and it breaks him or whatever the fuck these are fucking story beats. They're callback. They're interesting fucking moments that connect to the heart of what the movie is. And the 1994 is narrated by a fucking halfway bad, decent child actor. He, in the, in Brandon, in the fucking 1994 Brandon Lee movie, he fucking kills one of the fucking guys who raped and killed his wife. And the little girl's mother is there she pulls the knife on him he's worried she's gonna get killed and brandon lee knock grabs the knife or whatever he kind of cures her of her addiction and the mom at the next couple of scenes is cooking breakfast and stuff and there's a fucking heartfelt moment where the little girl is like i don't live i don't fucking like eggs or whatever and then you can tell she's being combative and then when she realizes no my mom is back she's like no scrambled i like scrambled egg uh sunny side up whatever like, there are moments where you want to tear up, and it's the campiest fucking nonsense ever. I don't know how much more I could say this. The heart, the charm of the first movie is what makes it stand the test of time. It is never going to be reviewed by really, like, even critics I really love, and it's going to be touted as a fucking movie that should have been given more acclaim. No, it was a fucking heartfelt project, in my opinion, and it oozed out into the fucking camera, into the film. Brendan Lee's standout performance, iconic moment, lightning in a bottle, whatever. But it wasn't like Act 1, Act 2, Act 3, fucking let's talk the writer's book of shit, perfection. This 2024 adaption is an annoying movie to me and it's really bland the movie but for me it's a little more aggravating because of my love for the 1994 version i just don't know how to say it m more than that like i wanted more out of this movie i wanted more and i didn't get it i i feel ripped off cheated and i don't really feel that way for many things i could look at the Marvel Cinematic Universe and kind of critically shit on a lot of the movies. But it doesn't mean I didn't have fun watching the Marvels. I had fucking had fun. Look at the shit on Brie Larson and those actresses and whatever. All the writing and stuff. Yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm not going to fucking go stand up to the podium and debate and argue points. No, I'm going to say, look, I fucking liked it. I had fun. Now, I want to see a fucking cosmic superhero blasting through ships using cosmic energy and shit. Fucking sue me. 
And this crow in this movie doesn't even give the the iconic look right. It just doesn't feel like they wanted to make it anything like the original movie. And maybe that's their right as their right as directors and producers who have a vision and say, no, this is what I want to do. And if it's more like the books or novels, I don't give a fuck. Because this movie is not obviously not a box office smash. I didn't even fucking read further to see how you know fans or critic reviews. I'm gonna share their all shit for the most part. Missed opportunity of epic proportions. Fifty million dollars. And you know what? That's a little surprising to me, because I would have fucking thought you put more money into this just for the Brandon Lee legacy aspect. You know how many fans of the original movie? I've never met somebody who doesn't like it. But maybe they don't tout it as a great movie, but you smile and you fucking chuckle and you have fun watching the movie. There's no fun to be had in this fucking movie. Nowhere. You know, I don't think I could think of the fucking fun. Maybe somebody could see the beginning romance fun. You know, they're going to a club, doing some drugs, smoking weed, talking about things that, you know, and they're dancing in a club, whatever, fuck. Okay, so maybe that's fun for people. <laughs> it was a fucking, I was watching some stuff, because after I do my podcast, I look at other people's stuff and try to give get a feel for it there was someone who said about how bad the acolyte like episode three's ending song was or was it seven you know because they use like a, a popish song and right away i knew the first person in my mind who would actually dance to that song like if it played spontaneously there are ways to look at things like i i try to put myself in other people's shoes but the Crow is a fucking shitty movie to me. It has no heart, no charm, no story to fucking tell. Yeah, you killed us, I'm back, purgatory it means nothing. And it just doesn't resonate. It has no power and depth. Not even close to the first movie, in my opinion. And I guess that's where I'll end this. There's no real... Man, fucking, I'm getting angry just fucking thinking about it. But I'm, I'm trying not to do that. Say, oh, $50 million wasted, you know, whatever. <sighs> Someone's vision just didn't work in almost any level. And holy shit. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm guaranteed people, so there are going to be some people who like that fucking opera scene. It was fucking terrible. Fucking horrible. I wanted it to end. And the way it does fucking end with him bringing out the heads and throwing them. But for what? For what? In the original one, Brandon Lee gets this guy. Cool actor guy. He's been in tons of stuff. Warriors come out and play. And he tapes him to his fucking chair in the car. And then he fucking puts a bomb in his crotch and fucking lets the car go. Boom, and it just busts through something and blows up. You know what? Give me something to chuckle at. Give me something to laugh at. Give me something to feel. Give me a moment of anything that fucking resonates with passion and not violent bullshit that has no purpose. I can't remember. Maybe I missed it. Was, it. was there any moment where he sees through the crow's eyes, like the way the first movie did with the crow vision? No, did did it hearken his arrival to people where the first movie you knew they knew it was you know oh shit and it it's done a little bit slowly where it's like oh no the bird what do you mean bird oh the crow and then people start realizing when the crow shows up the fucking guy is you know he's coming and then a the little girl figures it out holy shit I want to watch it again like the 1994 Brandon Lee movie. It has, it hits me in the feels in corny ways, some bad ways, yeah. Um, but it is, to me, an iconic movie that earned its fan base, 
earns its longevity and this crow movie the 2024 version is just gonna fade into obscurity a wasted opportunity not many moments to even praise sadly um i like bill skarsgård some of his performances were pretty good and one kind of cool scene you know visuals uh hated almost everything else and was super annoyed and that's really it i do not fucking recommend this movie i give no fucks it's just again bland the movie but the fuck they tried to do here didn't work and i'm even annoyed at my thumbnail you know the thing i chose for my image because it invokes something that the movie does not give a fuck about it gives no fucks about him standing there with the fucking coat and a crow flying over him it gives no fucks about that that image you're seeing right now is a fucking lie and the movie gives no fucks about in inciting uh that gothic feel that spookiness the image the smoke the blue the lightning nothing there's nothing interesting in this movie that comes close anyway there you go. The Crow 2024. Epic missed opportunity. I hope everybody's doing well. My best to you and yours. Take care.